Comparatively early in the operation, airfields north of the invasion beach area are captured and put into quick repair. These fields, as soon as they are operational, make it possible to augment with Okinawa-based aircraft, carrier-based planes, and those from other islands in support of the ground action. Aside from the tactical considerations, is the strategic value of these runways in future operations. Located as they are, only 350 miles from Japan proper, 750 from Tokyo. By now, it is apparent that the enemy's main numerical strength had been withdrawn to the southern part of the island prior to our landing. But this is no certainty, and those Japanese still in the north are formidably emplaced and tactically adept. As the advance continues, self-propelled 105mm artillery is brought up in support of the infantry assault troops. LBTA is brought upon an enemy held settlement. Almost completely undamaged, a flotilla of so called suicide boats is discovered. 17 feet overall, two and a half feet deep, and with a five and a half foot beam. They are armed at the bow with 300 pound drums of picric acid. Stowed in the side of a hill overlooking an isolated cove. They were to be launched down these runways. Waterborne, they would be powered on their mission by six cylinder motors. Unique to most previous Marine Corps operations, Okinawa, with its heavy population, supported a large number of village communities. This necessitates much street fighting and house-to-house -house cleanouts. Flame is used to advantage in flushing stubborn opposition from villages and prevents their reoccupation in the rear of our advance. The enemy has, up to this phase of the operation, shown no indication to surrender himself or his position, except with the most tenacious opposition, and with an effectiveness way out of proportion to his numbers. Although the progress is steady, each resistance point has to be overcome with a concentration of effort.
With the enemy in command of much of the tactical high ground, the advance is carried by the infantry without heavy support weapons. Supply troops in isolated positions, food, water, and ammunition are delivered by parachute airdrops. This is especially valuable here in hill country where advance units have outstripped their communications and have progressed into terrain difficult to negotiate for Amtrak's or other cross-country cargo carriers. Here, too, they would be exposed to enfilade fire from the heights, and the airdrop is the quickest, most expedient means of supply. Japanese aircraft come in constantly from carriers and other islands in the Ryukyus. The enemy still sticks stubbornly to his positions, determined to make the cleanup as costly as possible for the advancing Marines. and other hillside emplacements receive direct fire from our tanks. Under the cover of a hastily built up firing line, a wounded Marine is evacuated to safety. With concealment provided by a heavy smoke barrage, Marines prepare to advance across an open slope. 